Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to continue working on our Docker Compose file. So in the last video, we already came pretty far. We already created like these two services, the application which contains our Express uh, server and uh, this Postgres um, yeah, service, which basically uh, is just a plain Postgres image that we pull from Docker Hub. And there's like a couple of things we need to do in addition. So for one, you can see here that we have a port mapping. So our uh, Express server is going to be exposed to port 8080 on our host machine. And of course, we also want to uh, expose uh, the database. Um, and that is going to be important later on when we use it for testing. And this time around, and this is where it gets interesting, I'm going to expose it to a different port. So why is that? Well, uh, the reason is that per default, um, Postgres runs on port 5432. And internally, it is also running on port 5432. That is why these two numbers match. So these two numbers have to match because these are the internal ports of the container. And that one is the port uh, where the database would be reachable on the host system. And why are we using a non-default port? Well, the reason is that chances are we are probably running a um, local Postgres database. And if we were to do 5432, then we would probably have a collision, right? Because we would attempt to forward the uh, Postgres uh, container to port 5432 and we also have uh, Postgres running locally anyway so it would kind of interfere with our development setup and that is why I just do uh, 2345 to just have like a non-custom port but it's just 5432 in reverse uh, yeah so that's basically the reason and we are going to need this later on for testing actually because for testing later on we want this container to be uh, or the service to be reachable uh, from our host machine because when we run npm tests we're going to hit the uh, postgres container and in order to actually go get to the database we need to uh, yeah be able to reach it and that's why we need to expose it okay and the very last thing that we are going to do is and the question that you might also have is well but how do i actually create tables now right because remember, we have this SQL statement and right now in our Docker Compose file, well, it's just like an empty database. Like we have this database here, but there's like no schema defined. And there's a couple of ways on how you can do this. Um, I think the easiest way for this tutorial would be to plug in a volume. So uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about like how to explain this in the easiest possible way. So a volume is like, say you plug in like a USB stick into, uh, into your machine, right? Then you kind of have like an external drive that you just plug in. And basically a volume is pretty similar to that. So what a volume means is that you are plugging something like some, some drive basically inside of your container. Um, and that also means, say, if your container is writing data to this volume, that it would be accessible somewhere else. And what we can do is we can say, okay, we want to plug something into this container from the outside. And what we are going to plug in is we're going to plug in the migrations and we are going to mount like this directory. So we're going to take this folder and we're going to inject it inside of the container. Think of like a, plugging a USB drive in, inside of a container, so to say. And we're going to inject it in, inside of the uh, docker entry point dash init initdb.d. And what this does is docker has like a special um, location when it comes to initializing databases. So that means if you plug in like a folder, so for example, migrations, um, if you mount this inside of uh, this special place here, like this slash docker entry point in DB, then it's going to take a look at the files and it's going to actually execute the SQL files. And this is exactly what we want. So basically 
by plugging in this folder inside of the container into a specific location. So think about mounting your USB stick uh, into like a specific location. We are actually we can actually make the container execute our SQL. And I think it executes it in alphabetical order. So that means if we had an additional migration, we would just need to prefix it with uh, 02.sql and then it would run like both files or all the, it will run all the files inside of this uh, uh, directory. So I think that's like the easiest way, at least as far as this tutorial is concerned to get started. There's like other ways you can write like a, a script for that as well. And I think this is also what um, this blog post I showed uh, to you initially uh, is doing. I think it was here, yeah. So they are just doing like some custom migration with bash script. So you can do that as well. It was like quite a nice approach. But I just think that this volume approach is like easier at least for at least to get started. Okay, so now we have everything in here. And I have to say, theoretically, it should now work. Just wanted to add one more point. The syntax of of this is you specify like the path of the uh, directory you want to plug into your container. You make a colon and then you specify the path on where it should be plugged in. In our case, this is docker entry point initdb.d. Uh, and this is like some predefined thing that docker exposes. I think we can actually try this out now, right? Yeah, I think we can. Okay, let's just check one more time that on uh, local that we are, we have like this, okay. Okay, I think this should be anyway. So let's just try docker dash compose up and let's see what happens. Let's hope that our, uh, yeah, and you see this is now really interesting. So it's now creating its own network. That's that's why I said it's it's kind of isolated uh, from, from the rest of your machine. And that is why you have to do these, uh, uh, these, these weird uh, things, you know, with the port mapping and explicitly specifying like which port you want to publish or expose, uh, simply because it's like its own network that we are creating. Okay, and what it's now doing is it's currently like building the app. So as I assume that it's currently exactly, it's now executing the Docker file. And it's basically doing the exact same thing that we did in the previous video manually. But now it's going to be automated. So it's going to go through the Docker file, uh, pull the dependencies. It's going to npm install um, yeah, everything in here. And um, then it's going to start it up. So I think it should be done like in a few seconds, at least like with this uh, with this application yeah okay that looks good um let's see so it says now it's copying like all the code inside of this container so what it's now doing it's basically building this service and at the moment it's copying like all our source code inside of the container so if you recall this is like what um copy dot dot means take everything from the current working directory and copy it over inside of the container. And I think it might take like quite a while the very first time you do it um, because like it has to pull everything from the internet. Uh, but I think once you've done this, um, then it will be quicker, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, it did not already exist, okay. So that means it looks like pretty good. So it was able to uh, create like the image. And now what it is doing is it is uh, taking care of the Postgres thing. And um, yeah, the reason is because we're depending like on Postgres. So we first want to start up like Postgres and bam. And then afterwards we want to start like our actual application. And now you see that it should be up. So basically what it did is it is initializing Postgres. Um, it is going to run, it was running like our SQL files. I'm not sure whether we have like some log that is, ah, yeah, here it is. You see now it's saying, oh yeah, I'm currently running like this init.sql file, which is 
create table statement perfect exactly what we wanted so theoretically uh, I think now we can just do a call and it should it should work and we should get back a one because it's like the first because remember like the Postgres database is like a standalone container a database we just created on the fly so there shouldn't be anything inside of it okay so I'm sending something and bam yeah you see 201 created nice so that means it's working we got our application like successfully um, we successfully created like docker compose with two containers so we can now create like a database on the fly which is really really cool and I just wanted to show you like one more thing if you hit Control C now, um, what it's going to do is it's going to kill like these two processes, um, but it's only going to stop them. So it's not going to remove like the containers. It's just going to stop them. So if you run Docker, uh, oops, you don't see that here. Docker compose up again. Uh, it kind of knows. Ah, okay. There's already like a. Uh, we already created like all these containers. So what it's just going to do is it's going to start them again. And that's why you will see, you see now it's not pulling that stuff. It's just starting like a stopped container. And now if you try to run, if you try to make a call again, you will get an error back exactly because the, because we're still using the very same container. This is like, just some little note I want to add. So if you hit Control Z, uh, Control C for for cancel, um, that this is not going to remove the container. It's only going to stop it. Yeah, and here you see, okay, it's creating like some error, but that's fine. And um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. And everything looks pretty cool, right? We see some logs. Yeah, database system ready to accept connections. So everything is looking fine we are now pretty much done with Docker Compose. And that means we're only one step away from actually testing with our real database. And if you look at the acceptance criteria that we formulated before, okay, we didn't do the first one yet. Um, we can, uh, like we also have to do the second one, but Docker Compose will start up a new web server with Dockerized Postgres database. Yes, we, we did that. Docker, uh, the Postgres database will run on a non-default port on localhost to not collide. Yes. Okay. Provide easy configuration options. Yeah, that's currently what we're doing. So I think we are now pretty much done for this video. In the upcoming videos, we're actually going to start working on the tests. And it's going to be pretty easy because we have already set up Docker Compose. Uh, we can just start up like just one particular container. And that is like this Postgres container. And then we're going to use that to uh, run our tests against like the database running inside of Docker. Yeah, so that's it pretty much, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please give the video a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you have a question, uh, just let me know in the comments. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And I've also created an email list in the description down below. So if you guys want to have a say in what we cover next on the channel, you can sign up there and every once in a while, I'm going to send an email along. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.